that you have on hand. Um, even if all you have is a pencil, you could just draw it in. Uh, but what I'm gonna be using are watercolors again. I know I use these a lot. It's just because they're easy to work with and they dry fast, um, but you can use any kind of paints. And then I probably at some point will use uh, an oil pastel or maybe a black Sharpie and then maybe some crayons or markers on top of my uh, painting to add a little detail and color. All right, guys. And so be thinking, kids, of where do you want your hot air balloon to be? Do you want it to be floating high up in the sky, so, so high that all you can see are maybe clouds or sunshine or moon and stars? and nothing else. Do you want one big hot air balloon or a whole bunch of hot air balloons? Um, do you want there to be a really cool landscape around your hot air balloon? What I'm gonna do is grab a scratch paper. So if you kiddos have um, just a, a little cheap extra piece of scratch paper, um, we're gonna just do a quick run through or practice of how to draw an air balloon. Once you know how to draw the air balloon, then you can decide you know how you want to do it on your real picture one great big one or maybe several um, it is totally up to you so first what we're going to do is jump in with a practice and for this i'm just going to use a pencil if you have a pencil handy i recommend that's what you use for the practice um, because then you can erase any bloopers um, it's just a little easier to use the pencil so if um, it doesn't show up very clearly on the camera, I will switch to marker for you, but I'm starting out uh, with a pencil, first of all, and grab a couple more scratch papers. Okay, so are you kiddos ready? We're gonna go ahead and jump into our practice hot air balloon. The very first step for your hot air balloon is to draw a simple circle. You can do this freehand, or you can use a template if you wanna grab anything nearby that's a round shape. Um, even my little, if I had like an empty water jar um, laying around, I could use that or a coffee mug or a cup if you're not feeling comfortable drawing a circle. But I'm just gonna freehand it because you know what, it doesn't have to be perfect. Um, you want this to look like real art, but not like it came off of a printer. So it's okay if it's not perfect. So I'm just gonna freehand and I'm gonna put my circle, if I, if I imagine a circle kind of about like the palm of my hand, I want it to be a little bit higher up in the paper. I don't, you could put it down farther if you want, but I want mine to be right about here so that there's room for my little basket to come down and then also room to put a landscape down below. So that's where I'm gonna put it. But for a practice, it doesn't really matter where you put it. It will matter on the final picture. So I'm gonna just put a little dot where I want the very top of my balloon to be. Go ahead and put that dot there. And then you're gonna draw a circle. Doesn't have to be perfect. You can always go back around and then clean up your lines with an eraser too, if you want to. And I'm gonna call that circle good enough. Might erase a little bit. <clears throat> right down in here. And one thing I'll mention here, um, just as a little side note for when you are doing your, your real paper later, the bigger the circle is, the closer the balloon is to you or to the viewer of this picture. So this, this is a nice big circle, which shows that this balloon is really close to the viewer. If you wanna make a couple of balloons and some of them you want to look farther and farther away, you just draw smaller and smaller circles. So maybe I've got another balloon floating out here. You know, and that circle is about this size. And then maybe I have another little tiny balloon 
floating way off in the distance. And he'd be like that size. So keep that in mind too. Um, and we'll, we'll revisit that concept, but just keep it in the back of your head. Okay, so we're gonna focus on this big one. Once you have your circle in, what we need to do is draw, so this is like the top half of our balloon. We need to draw the bottom half, which kind of comes down and almost makes it look the, like the shape of a light bulb. So what you're gonna do is just about two or three fingers. Um, I'll just put mine about two fingers from the bottom. I'll just make a little line there. And you can do three, it doesn't matter. And what you're gonna do is you're gonna draw a curved line right in the middle. You want it to be about equal. So if I put my pencil here, right in the middle of my balloon, it's about the same here and here. And you want it right in the middle with equal um, space coming out on either side. Looks like a little chin. All right, and then once you have that drawn in, you're gonna connect this line to your balloon. Now imagine the shape of a light bulb, and you can even, if you're not sure exactly, if you're not feeling confident, use your finger to draw an imaginary line first before you do it with your pencil. But you're gonna basically just start from the edge here of that little curved line. You're gonna go up and then curve and then connect. So it's gonna go up, and then curve and connect. And then you're gonna do the same over on this side, up, curve, and connect. So it looks like I've got a big light bulb. And then if you're wanting to, you can do the same on these little, if you've done little ones, or you can ignore those and just focus on the big one for now. I'll go ahead and do it real quick on these little ones. All right, once you have that shape in, you can go ahead and erase this line right here. So just erase that bottom bit of the circle. And that's gonna leave you with basically the shape of a light bulb. And you can still see a little bit of the line after I erased. That's no big deal, because we're gonna be coloring. Um, if Let's say that this was the real picture and I had this line still showing, no big deal. We'll just, you know, you'll co color or paint right over the top of that. If you're just drawing, if let's say you don't have any um, crayons or markers or paints, then what you can do is shade in the whole balloon to be kind of a gray color, and then that won't even show up. All right, kiddos. So we're gonna move on to the basket. So the basket of the balloon sort of dangles down a ways underneath and it's connected by really strong ropes. So go ahead and put, um, you can decide how far down you, you want your basket to be. Um, I'm gonna do mine about, I don't really know, I guess probably about a little more than one finger like one and a half fingers, there we go. So I'm gonna do mine right about there. You just kind of decide what looks good to you. All right, and once you have it placed, you're gonna make another shape that looks just about the same exactly as this line. So again, if I find the middle, 
I'm gonna make a curved line about that far coming out and a curved line the same on the other side. It's like a little smile. Go ahead and take your time and make sure that it's right in the middle. If you accidentally got it too far, way over here or way over here, you can erase part of the other side and then draw in on this side so that it is as much in the middle as you can get it. All right. And then <clears throat> what you're going to do is add two angled lines on your basket. Just straight lines going down at a slight angle like that. And then you're going to close it out with another curved line. All right, and then once you have those shapes in, we're gonna do two more lines that's gonna, they're simple, but they're gonna make this look more 3D, more, uh, more realistic. You could leave it like this. This is perfectly fine. But if you want to open up this basket shape, what you can do, oops, switch my pencil, is you're gonna add another curved line, but instead of curving down, you're gonna curve it up. And we're gonna do two. We're gonna do one right here on the basket and we're gonna do one right here on the air balloon. So I'm gonna curve that line up like this. And I wanna make, see the corners where the two points come together? I don't want those to be pointy. I want them to be kind of curved, a little bit round. And whenever you make a shape like this, this is called an ellipse. And when you look at anything that is a circle shape, when you're looking at it, when it's kind of on an angle, slightly tilted, it makes this shape. But if you look at an ellipse in nature, you'll notice the corners aren't pointy, they're curved. All right, we're gonna do the same thing right up here with our balloon. Make another curved line and then make sure those corners aren't too pointy. All right, kids. Now let's go ahead and add some detail to this basket. Um, you could just do some simple. Now we're gonna do some simple lines, but I'm not just going straight across. I'm not just gonna do this because this basket isn't flat, it's curved. It has a round shape. So I'm following the shape of that basket with my pencil. like that. And then you can even do it on the inside of the basket too, if you want to, or just kind of shade it in. Doesn't matter. I'll give you guys just another second to put the basket design in and then we're going to do the lines connecting this. I'll go ahead and add a couple little simple baskets to these far balloons and because these ones are farther out in the distance I'm not going to bother doing this shape here. I'm just going to do these more simple just 
one basic little shape like that. The farther away things get, the less detail you can see. Okay. All right, kiddos, now let's go ahead and connect our basket to our balloon. So we're gonna take right here, the very edge of that basket. Imagine that there's a very strong rope tied down. Of course, it's tying it down on both sides of the basket and it's gonna go straight up and then connect to the side. You may want to um, practice this line with your finger first and then very lightly with your pencil this, what you don't want to have happen, I'll show you what not to do. You don't want it to look like this. You don't want a big, loose, floppy line. Because that's if that wouldn't be holding that basket down very good, would it? <laughs> so what you want is a line that comes right off this curve. Kind of follow, the pe follow that curve with your pencil until it separates from the curve. So I have a line that's starting here at the corner of my basket and connecting. Imagine that this is a rope and it's being held very tight. And this rope connects the basket to this balloon. It follows it all the way up and around. And that rope kind of connects right there at the top and it's being held very, very tightly. So you don't want sloppy lines coming way out here. That, that would make it look like it's not tight. You want it just really, really tight, hugging that balloon so, so tight, hanging on for dear life so they don't fall out of the sky. Okay, and then you're gonna do the same thing right over here on this side. So you're gonna follow the curve with your pencil then follow it until it, and then once you get around here, you just keep on going straight. The curve of that balloon goes this way, but you keep on going straight. And I can even stop about here just to kind of show where you're aiming for. And then you can pick up your pencil and start down here and connect the two. And draw very lightly in case you kind of need to erase and start again. There we go. So we've got two strong ropes held down tightly on the balloon. And then once you have those in, you're gonna add a couple of more ropes. So I'm gonna just come in about a finger. And I'm gonna come in a finger on this side. And you're gonna do the same thing. You're gonna go up Follow the curve of your balloon, and then just stop right at the top. And because this is following the left-hand curve, I'm, I'm curving it toward the left. And because this one's following the right curve, I'm gonna curve this one towards the right. And then I'm gonna add one more line right in the middle. I can either have it go straight up which would be no curve, or I can have it slightly curved to the left or slightly curved to the right. But because this one's in the middle, it doesn't have as much curve. So I did that one pretty much just straight. And then if you wanna get fancy, you can add some lines or some ropes on the back end of the basket too. So like right here, I can just add a little line showing where the, if you imagine there's ropes going on down around the back end of the balloon, ropes coming down the back end and you can see them right here connecting, holding the basket up. So I just put two little bitty ones. And then last but not least, once you have all your lines in, all your ropes, everything's drawn in, if you wanna go in and add more designs to your hot air balloon, um, and you can Google hot air balloon, 
and do a Google search and see what comes up for some ideas. But just remember when you're putting your designs in, remember to follow the shape of the balloon. So it's a round shape. So I'm not just gonna draw my designs flat. But for example, if I wanted to make some lines kind of going like this, see how I'm following that curve, that round shape. And if you imagine this is round, it's coming out and then around like this. So I'm gonna imagine what that shape would do to the line. So then this line would be pretty much not very curved. And then this line would start curving the other way because now we're going down on the bottom curve of the balloon. You can start putting some of those designs. All right. Now, if you decide you don't like something, so I'm not really liking how this opening looks. It just doesn't look right to me. So you know what? I'm just going to erase it. I'm looking at the comments. It's hard to see what I'm doing because all my words are showing up on top of where you're drawing. Hmm. I don't see any words. Let's see. Sorry, guys. I'm not sure what's going on with that. Can you see that a little better? Is there words in the way? Or is, can you guys see that all right? Hopefully, hopefully that's a little better. And I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna erase that bottom opening. It just didn't look right to me. Okay. And I'll do one more. And then I'm going to go ahead and outline this in Sharpie um, to kind of just show the final drawing. So it was the circle shape. Coming down into the light bulb shape. And I decided to ditch this opening line, but you can keep it if you like. And then we've got the basket. And then a couple of We've got our ropes. And then you would have whatever designs that you want in there. And then I got some little bitty ones back here. getting a little sloppy on these ones, but you get the idea. All right, so once you've got it on there and you're happy with your balloon, now remember this is just the practice one, think about how you want your background. Do you want uh, just clouds? You know, maybe you just wanna put some, some fun clouds back here. Maybe it's nighttime and you want moon and stars or a sunshine. Or maybe you want a really pretty landscape. So if you want a landscape, you can even try it out on your practice page first just to see, um, work out any 
design elements that you're thinking about before you put it on your real paper. I'm gonna flip this over just to give you some ideas of what you may wanna do for um, your landscape if that's the way you wanna go with it. So you might want to do, let me see, it's kinda, you can see all of those marks. Let me try another paper. For the landscape, I'm gonna use a pencil first so I can erase um, if I change my mind. But you're gonna to wanna to do whatever's closest is gonna be biggest. And then as it gets farther and farther away, it gets smaller and smaller. Um, one landscape design that always looks good and there's, no re there's really no way to mess it up is if you wanna do some rolling hills and some pretty trees and some flowers. So to do that, what you do is for the hill that's closest to you, you can pick whatever side of the paper, but you want that hill to be pretty big, about the size of your whole hand. So go ahead and make a mark and you just, and it doesn't matter where you start and stop this hill. You just basically make a shape like that. Just start it on the side, run it down, and then off the bottom of the page. And then what you're gonna do is make another little hill. And again, it doesn't matter. There's no right or wrong. Just start anywhere you want. I'm going to start mine here and run that from, from the side of this hill all the way off to the edge of the page. So I have two pretty big hills. And then if you want this to look maybe like um, farmland, if there's rows of wheat growing or something, you can even put in lines that go like this. And you can color those in different greens or maybe different, like a dark orange and a yellow, um, every other one to make it look like farm fields. And you can either do this hill something different or kind of do the same. And then you may want to put um, a couple of nice big trees right here. And for trees or shrubs, I just do kind of little lumpy shapes like that. And remember, because these trees are close, they're gonna be nice and big. Now this is just one idea, because I was thinking my hot air balloon is gonna be the size, more or less, like this. So if that's gonna be the size, I don't mind doing a big landscape. Now, if you're planning on having a really giant air balloon that takes up more of the page, you may wanna do a smaller landscape. And then for the hills behind the front hill, those start to get um, smaller. So that one might only be two fingers. This one was a whole hand, but now because they're getting farther and farther away, it's gonna get smaller and smaller. So that one will look something like that. And then I'll run that hill kind of behind these trees off in the distance like that. And then I might do one little, one more little bitty one right here behind this tree and another one just to finish it out. So see how these are really, really wide and then it gets smaller and smaller. Um, now also, if you do bushes or trees in the background, those are gonna get smaller. These are close, so they're very, very big. But I'm gonna do some trees over here and they're gonna be real tiny because they're very far away. And I'm just gonna do some little, just some little scribbles little puffs just to show. I even do one behind a little bit, okay. And then here I might do more, more of this style, but smaller because it's far away. So see how we've got the big ones with the big hills and then um, the smaller ones, the farther away it gets. And I can even do some, just various shapes
And also if you're doing uh, wheat or the, the lines that look like um, crop fields, you could make those closer and closer together the farther away that you get. Because this, this one is farther away, see how they're much closer together and these are wider spaced. And of course you can add flowers, birds, whatever. If you're adding flowers, they're gonna be big if they're close and they're gonna be little tiny if they're back here. Just keep that in mind. You can even add a little house in the background. I might add a little block shape here. little house. You get the idea. And of course I'm going to paint in some fun clouds. All right. I think I'm pretty happy with that composition. I think that's what I'm gonna go with. Something similar to this. Um, if you're not quite happy with how it looks, you can erase, you can change it up. Uh, get it to how you like it on your scratch paper, and that way you can just jump right in and um, into your final uh, piece of paper, your real one, we'll call it, um, with confidence. All right, guys, so I'm gonna switch this one out. And I'm going to switch it to my real piece of paper. This is a watercolor paper. And I'm going to just start drawing again on here. And it should go a lot quicker because um, I've already done it once before on the scratch paper. So now I feel confident to go ahead and draw it again on my real paper. And I'm going to use a pencil just in case I make any mistakes so I can erase. Um, so I'm going to draw it in with pencil. And then I'm gonna probably trace over my final lines with an oil pastel or a Sharpie, just to give it a nice black outline. You don't have to do that. And then I'll uh, go ahead and paint it in with watercolor. Another thing that you could do is after you draw it in with pencil, you could paint it in with watercolor and then go back over it with pen or Sharpie just to give it some definition. Or of course you can color it in with crayons or markers. If you have Crayola markers or some type of um, washable markers, you can first color it in and then use a wet paintbrush to go over the marker and it'll make it look like watercolor. I had decided that I wanted my hot air balloon to be about here. So I'll go ahead and draw that in first. And I'm drawing very light and sketchy and wispy so that it can be easy to change a line or erase. If I make a mistake, you probably can't even hardly see that uh, on the camera just because I'm doing this so, so light. And I'm not gonna draw dark until all my lines are exactly how I want them. Then I'll go back over them dark. And of course you can also be tracing to make your circle if you want. Use um, something to trace. Okay, so there's my circle. There's my light bulb. Remember to be always checking to make sure whatever you do on one side, it looks the same on the other. And if it doesn't, kind of try as much as you can, as best as you can. It'll never be perfect, but just try to get them to look pretty much the same. All right, and then I'm gonna make my basket.
And if you wanna draw a little person or a cute little animal or whatever you want in the basket, you can. Maybe I'll draw a little person. I don't like that person. Let's make them disappear. Okay. <clears throat> okay, so there's my balloon. And I think I'm going to do another couple of balloons up here in the sky. And don't forget to put in any fun designs you want in your hot air balloon.
just need some clouds. Some of my clouds I'm making smaller and tiny to show that those are very far away. And some of the clouds are really big. So I'm gonna go ahead and outline this so you guys can see what I'm doing here. made a little blooper there. Remember, there's mistakes in every piece of art. You just have to go with it and not worry about it. And I think I'll do some little little dots along this just to jazz this up a little bit leave it alone. Okay, so there's that one, and then I'll just do these little background ones real quick. So tiny, so far off in the distance. Now sometimes what I notice when kids are trying to make something that's far away, what they do is instead of putting it, making it smaller, what they do is put it higher on the page. Now if something's far away, it just gets smaller. It doesn't go up necessarily. So this balloon is farther away than this balloon and so is this one. But notice I didn't put them, I didn't put them up here, I simply made them smaller. Just a little something to keep in mind when you're drawing. Okay, and then the clouds. I think the clouds, I'm actually gonna use a crayon. I'm gonna use a white crayon because I don't want the paint to stick to it. So I just have a regular white crayon here. 
And I'm just coloring in the clouds a little bit so that the paint won't stick to that and it'll stay white. It might have a little bit of the sky color peeking through, but that's fine. I mainly want to get the outline plus a little bit in the middle of that cloud. Whenever you use a crayon or oil pastel, uh, the paint can't really stick very well to that, especially if it's watercolor. And I'm not worried about filling in every single little bit of space. put in my landscape down below. I might make it a little smaller. Um, here's my original um, scratch paper version of it. Um, I'm pretty happy with it. The only thing is I this is all so big that it looks like this balloon is really small. Like it looks like this balloon is close to the ground but just not very big. So what I can do to change that um, Whenever you're trying to make something appear larger, all you have to do is make everything else around it smaller. So I'm gonna take this same design and just make it smaller. So let's see. And then for those trees, I think these trees are what's causing the problem. Because if a balloon is up high in the sky, the trees are gonna look much smaller than the balloon. If, if we're up here looking at the balloon, um, if we're down, if it depends on where we're standing. If, we're, if we are standing down on the ground looking up at the balloon, the balloon will look tiny, but the trees will look big because that's what's close to us. But if we are looking at the balloon up in the sky, let's pretend that we're also up in a balloon looking at it. The balloon will look big and the ground and trees will look tiny. So it all depends where the viewer is. So I'm gonna make these trees way down here. See how small I made those? And it makes it look, feel like this is up high and these trees are way down low. And I made these lines very close together so it looks like this hill is much farther away than this hill. And I'm gonna do a couple more trees off in the distance. These are gonna be so, so tiny because they're so far away. And then I think I'll make this a field of flowers right here, keeping those flowers small so it looks like it's far away.
I'm not gonna draw every single flower. I'm gonna just kind of dab a little dab of the color with my watercolor brush for most of the flowers. And then I'm gonna erase any lines in those trees. And I might just put a bit of bush, bushes right here. And one more little hill, kind of some taller mountains. Okay. All right, I think I am ready to start painting. So if you kids still need some time to continue to draw, uh, take your time. Don't feel like you have to keep up with me. Um, if you're not ready to move on to this next step, don't you worry about it. Just continue to draw, but I'm gonna go ahead and start painting. Um, what I'm using, just basic watercolors, nothing fancy. Um, and I'm just gonna use the brush that comes with the kit, my little watercolor brush. Um, and I'm gonna start probably with, um, I'm not sure, the sky or the ground. So, all right, let's jump in if you're ready. So, I'm gonna go ahead and do the sky first. And actually, because it's so big, I'm gonna, I do have another brush. Um, this one, I'm just gonna use this to throw in some sky color. And then I'll switch to my smaller brush. So, oh, hello. Got a little pink going on there. Let me clean out my brush. And I'm just putting water first because I want this to be a really um, soft blended sky. So I'm going to put water first and then come back in with my paint color second so that it blends really nicely. It'll just blend right into the water without having any harsh lines. So I'm painting first with clear water. I'm going around my clouds. Even though I put um, crayon on them, I still am trying to not get too much sky color in the clouds. I wanna keep them as white as I possibly can. But if you do get a little bit of sky color in there, it won't matter at all. Don't forget too, if you're doing sky, be sure to paint the sky color in this little gap here that's above the basket. Um, you know, that, that should be the sky color. And I'm going around my hot air balloons because I don't want it to the sky color to blend onto those. But sometimes it's easiest to paint things that are farthest away first. In other words, the sky. Um, just because if let's say that you're painting the sky and you accidentally get some on your hot air balloon, it's easy to just paint over that when you get to the balloon. Whereas if you do the things um, the opposite direction, let's say that you paint in the closest thing first and you paint in your balloon, then you have to be super careful going around it with the sky color. Because um, if you get some on it, it's harder to, you know, you've already done it. So it's a little easier to work farthest away, um, whatever's farthest and work towards whatever's closest to you last. That's just a little trick. You don't have to do it that way, but it does tend to make it easier. Okay, so I've got my water and I'm gonna go in with a sky color. I'm trying to decide if I want a blue sky or if I want this to be more a sunset sky. I think I'm actually gonna do it more sunset. Since I already got some pink on there, I might as well. And with the sunset, anything, any warm colors will work. Any sort of reds, magentas, purples, um, pinks, oranges, yellows. Get that little gap under my balloon. I'm gonna 
switch into red. I know I might not be going in the proper order of colors for a real sunset, but since it's my painting, I can do what I want. And I'm overlapping the sky color a little bit onto the land, just so that it'll make it look a little bit more blended and it'll cast some of that glowing light a little bit onto it. And then I'm gonna go, let's bring some of that magenta a little bit up here, and I'm gonna go a little into some more purples, more cool purples. find the purple. Sometimes it can be hard to tell on the palette which one is purple. I think that's black. Yeah. There we go. I'm not too worried about getting it on this little tiny balloon in the background. It won't really, you won't even notice either way. And if you're using watercolor, remember if you want a darker, richer color, use less water and more paint. And if you want it lighter, get a lot of water down on your page first and then just, just a tiny touch of paint with lots of water. And then just go back and kind of change whatever you want to change. Um, the clouds look a little too white, I, so I don't think I'm gonna go completely around them, I'm going to actually put some paint on top of them just to let a bit of the sky color wash over the clouds. And then I'll take my a bit of my paper towel and dab it. And if you need it lighter, you can get some water on your paper towel and scrub it even more. I just want those clouds to look a little softer. Oh, and I missed some here. Um, this is actually part of the sky. It's in between the rope and the hot air balloon. That happens a lot when you're doing hot air balloons, so just keep an eye out to make sure that you're painting in these little gaps between the rope and between the, the balloon not to leave that blank. It's not technically a cloud, so it should be pretty light, but... Oh, and I did it over here too. There we go. Okay. I really like this magenta here. I'm gonna get some more of that. I just think that's pretty, so... Just punch that color up a little bit. And it helps that cloud to stand out too. I gotta move fast before this dries here with those dark lines. I don't want there to be harsh lines. Get my brush wet and just sort of blend that in.
and just wherever you need it to blend, just go back over it with water. If you want to get really crazy, you can even take your page and kind of tilt it up or down a little bit and let some of those colors run into each other. All right, so I am happy with this sky. I'm going to go ahead and um, switch to my smaller brush, make sure it's clean. And I'm going to go into my hills down below. And because this is a sunset, um, I'm not going to do a super bright green just because it's going to be a more golden green, more toned down because it's reflecting some of that, um, you know, warm reddish, orangish, purplish light onto the fields. So I'll just get a base color first and then I'll put some of those warmer tones in see if they look good if not I'll change my mind and go back to plain green actually it might actually look kind of cool if you do a contrast um, you know more cool tones down on the landscape with warm tones uh, up in the sky so that might look good too kind of trying to decide which way I want to go with it. I was going to do this warm. Hmm, let's see. kind of a every other one for these fields I'm going to do like an orange color it's not bright orange it has a bit of um, it's blending in with a bit of that green to tone it down just splashed some in my sky as long as you catch it when it's still pretty wet usually pretty easy to fix just blot it with a paper towel and then go back over it with some of the original color And if you're not super in love with the color, you can just blot it and, um, you know, get it back to white and then do, go again or just mix another color into it until you're happy. I'm not loving any of these colors, so I'm just going to blot them up. again.
sometimes something looks good in our head we think it's gonna turn out and then when we do it it's like oh that does not look so good so I want to do that green and then my other stripes I'll just do a different green and I'll let them blend together a little bit For these little tiny flowers, I'm going to just touch with my brush and let them blend. Hello. Turn out black. Sometimes when you're doing something that's really far off in the distance, it gets a little bit of a blue, like a blue gray or a purplish um, cast to it because you're looking at it through um, layers of atmosphere. So what you could do to make it look more convincing or realistic is just add a tiniest touch of blue to whatever color you're doing. if it's far away in the distance. And I think this hill, I'm gonna do something fun. I'm gonna do like a kind of a burnt orange color. I may want to add just a touch of black to it. And then those far off distant mountains over here, I'm gonna make those just sort of a gray color, like a bluish gray. Remember that the farther away things are, the less noticeable they are. And the less dark they are.
Okay, so I'm gonna go back in with my small brush now that this is mostly dry, because I don't want this to blend into the mountains. I wanna make sure that that's pretty much dry. I might actually give that just another second. Um, and then I'm just gonna go in and put some blobs of green to make it those little bushes. And you could even do that with marker if you wanted to. You may even want to add a touch of black. That's a little too black. And of course you can always uh, make them a little bigger or smaller. And then I've got those bushes way, way off in the distance. Just barely touch my page with the tip of my paintbrush and a little bit of green. And then some of these lines here. little row of trees with little I'm just doing sort of like little dots for their tops of them okay you could fuss and fuss all day with with little details but sometimes it's best to just move along okay so now I'm gonna jump into my hot air balloon and I'm gonna keep it a little bit more simple So I'll just do kind of a yellowish brown for the basket. And you can put a little bit of a shadow to um, stand out that shape if you want to. Use either the opposite color or just a little bit of blue or black. And of course, keep in mind what color the balloon is against. So if you have your balloon against purple um, or blue or yellow or whatever the color of your sky is, think of what would look good um, next to that color. Usually either do something that's similar. So um, something that's similar to purple would be, you know, a pink or a light purple or, um, a reddish purple or do the opposite so what's opposite of purple would be something you know more like yellow
I going a little too crazy with my colors. If you get too many colors on something, it starts to not look as good. Sometimes it's better to have fewer colors, but oh well. Dab that one off a little bit. Then, last but not least, if you want to, you can trace around. Now, I already did it with a Sharpie, so you can see I have some nice um, black lines that pop out. Um, if you haven't done that yet, or if you want them, you might not want those kind of lines, you can trace back around with either a Sharpie or a uh, black oil pastel. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and just do it with a Sharpie. Either one is fine, or a crayon. And you don't even have to do this if you don't want the lines. that's a little too wet, so I'm gonna have to let that dry just a tad before I can put the um, lines in as for the, um, the rows of whatever's growing in that field. But I'm gonna definitely wanna bring um, these trees out a little bit. I think the Sharpie is on its last legs. Let's see if I can find another Sharpie for that. Yeah, my paper's just a little too wet to want to take a Sharpie, but I'll get it in there as best I can anyway. try and accent some of these ones way off in the distance there. I think I'm gonna call that done. So remember to take 
a step away from it once you think you're done. Close your eyes and just walk away from it for a minute or two and then come back to it and see if there's anything that looks like it just needs something. Um, you know, if I really wanted to, I could probably put a couple more bushes here or maybe a little house. Um, you know, if I really wanted to fuss with all the details, but um, I think I'm just gonna leave it alone. So, I think I'm gonna call it done. There's my finished project. Um, I'm pretty happy with it. I might mess with it a little bit more, but um, I had fun. I think hot air balloons are a fun project. I might even do another one uh, later today. So hopefully you kids had a good time drawing the hot air balloon with me, and I really, really wanna see them. Please remember to post to my Facebook page or uh, message me so I can see uh, what you came up with. I can't wait to see all the different designs. Some of them might be up in the sky with just clouds. Some of them might have people in the basket or animals. Some might be over a really pretty landscape or some of them may be totally crazy made up things and I just can't wait to see what you guys came up with. Anyway, that is it for now. I will post um, about next week's lesson as soon as I know what we're doing. Watch the page um, to stay updated with next lessons coming available soon and I can't wait to do another drawing with you guys next week. Thanks and have a great day. Bye-bye.